Hi, how are you this week? This week we're talking about flowering trees because I've had a lot of questions about them. People have asked me, is there a difference between flowering trees and flowers? And they've also pulled me up a little bit over the fact that I seem very focused in the last couple of months on smaller plants and shrubs and, and little flowers. And uh, I guess people are wondering if I'm a little bit biased. Well, I thought I'd bring you out to the front here and you can hear cars going past because this is my little front urban, what was a horrible little wasteland. And it is turning into a pretty little garden because I am, focusing and concentrating on putting those smaller flowers to sort of fill in the spaces here. But there are lots of trees here and we're right next to a towering bottle brush here behind me and, and that's been there for probably since forever, just about. So there definitely is a lot of uh, energy, a lot of different sorts of energies as well and we'll go into that uh, too with flowering trees. But the thing is, all trees flower. In a plant, the reproductive part of a plant is a flower and trees need to reproduce and so trees have flowers. You mightn't always see the flowers, they mightn't be the glorious, magnificent magnolias and the great big beautiful sort of flourish of jacaranda blooms. They might be microscopic, they might even look like little green leaves but rest assured they will be there because without flowers the trees wouldn't reproduce. It's just that some you see, some you don't, some flower all the time, some are seasonal. It's just like any other plant, but all trees flower. So when we talk about flowering trees, I think a lot of people are talking about uh, the ones that are more ornamental, the ones that they're using uh, to, to, to sort of bring, well, we'd be using the energy, but to bring the beauty of those flowers into the garden. These are having a nice rustle, aren't they, behind <laughs> me? So when we're talking about uh, flowering trees, uh, we're talking about all trees. So I really like you, if you could, have a look at the trees that are around you. I know my friends in the Northern Hemisphere, you're you know, in the middle of winter, so you, you'll be coming into this time soon. But really explore, uh, not just the native, but the wild trees, the trees that have been introduced, and see if you can find out when they flower, and make a time to go and explore and have a look. It's wonderful these days you can find a lot of information online and I can definitely help you so if you were sort of a little bit stuck um, I don't mind sort of pointing you in the right direction in the northern hemisphere the Royal Horticultural Society is amazing they have lots and lots of uh, resources and pretty much the same down here in Australia we all seem to sort of uh, fall back on the good old Burke's backyard <laughs> garden uh, sheets they're fantastic so you can find out all your different flowering times in Australia as well but really um, the trees are like other plants they will flat different ones will flower all around uh, at different times of the year you know in your snow areas obviously it's going to be a little bit harder the dead of winter it's it's not going to happen but go and explore like make a date with a tree and go and check it out when it's flowering because it's just such a magical thing to take notice of I think especially in our urban areas we get really sort of um, focused on what's down here and we're not looking up enough as I said I'm I'm below this magnificent um, very big bottle brush here and another that's sort of a medium size and a big flowering garden it's just it's probably about 20 meters high looking at straight now and I'm sure that in the everyday life we can miss out on those sorts of things so this week I'm just going to touch base with you on a few of them and I'm going to show you a little uh, little little drawing, little cartoon on the reproduction cycle of a tree. Look, I know most of you would understand it, but I know a lot of kids watch this as well. I've had a lot of mums and dads tell me that they uh, have been sort of showing the kids my podcast, just to the ones that are really interested in flowers. So um, but anyway, we'll have a little bit of fun with that one. I've got a meditation where we can go into the cycle of a tree and uh, go through the flowering process as well, just to connect with those things and a little arty crafty project that uh, I've developed with um, in a, a slightly different way I'm, 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 I'm changing a little bit and I'm sure you've seen something similar around but it's a, a little affirmation tree that you could uh, create with a little bit of the uh, energy of flowers I'm smiling because I just I love the juxtapose of the passing traffic and the birds in my front yard I haven't actually lived anywhere where it's been so uh, meshed together so loudly and I love it I really do 
Uh, the other thing I wanted to share with you this week was a story that I, I, I'm assuming that it is Native American because I have heard it many times. Um, I've heard it from people in my family have uh, spoken about it and I did hear it quite often in my travels as a Girl Scout leader over in the United States as well. And it's the story of the sacred tree and it's a very special sacred tree that uh, was I, I, it was here and put on earth uh, by the creator of everything and this tree um, I guess it's a little bit like the tree in the Garden of Eden this tree had all the knowledge all of the nourishment all of the healing powers everything for mankind but also this tree its roots went right down into Mother Earth and its branches right up to Father Sky and connected what was above and what was below and with, what, with us all here and very connected with us and our spirit. So everything that we did was a reflection of the tree and vice versa. It's a very entwined relationship. But we were told that we had to look after the tree. We had to not turn away from the tree and not ignore the tree. And that the tree would always be there for us for healing, for nourishment, for guidance and for wisdom. But as we, and we have, turned away from the tree and looked to other sources for substance and other um, sort of things we wanted in life, and we were just ignoring it and we were, we were becoming selfish as well and wanting more and other things and, and probably not believing in the tree. The tree then didn't die. The tree just sort of let go of us and we lost where the tree was. The tree would never die though. The tree is there somewhere. And it is during these times now, I strongly believe that we are being guided back to the tree. And there's a lot of people that are connected. I know a lot of people that are very connected with obviously looking after nature, caring, and finding their way back to the tree. And as we do, the tree will grow stronger and we'll be able to find it. And all of nature that supports the tree will get stronger as well. The fruit of the tree is our healing. The fruit of the tree nourishes us and it gives us wisdom. But the flowers of the tree, I was always told, were, would give us the messages, they would give us our vitality, they would give us love as well, and they would always be there. We could find them when we had lost the tree. We could smell the flowers on the breezes. We could see them from the distance and we would be drawn in again to the tree. So if we were lo we'd lost our way, they were the ways we would find our way back to the tree. And I've always, always loved that story. And as I said, I, I'm, I've heard it from other people and I'm pretty sure that originally it is a Native American uh, story and I honour that. Uh, as I said, I heard it when I was a little girl from various members of my family and I've always thought that there was this magical tree. Um, maybe some people from overseas, but also the Australians that watch my podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the magic faraway tree. Oh, that's more sort of <laughs> UK story, isn't it? Um, and also the gum nut fairies as well. I was really entranced with though, all those stories from my youth because I, would, I thought all the trees could have been the tree that I'd heard about. And... Uh, I'd, I'd always put those sorts of um, feelings with those trees. This could be, this could be the, the gorgeous, wonderful tree that, that, that was out there that I respected and I thought was the, the everything tree uh, that I wanted to respect and honour. So if you could go and, and seek out different sort of um, variations and stories about that tree, I think that's a really good start when we're looking at uh, flowering trees as well and what they mean. There are so many stories of course and they're entwined in, in, in legends and of gods and goddesses and different beliefs and it's very fascinating sort of research and, and, uh, and insight I guess into what's going on. Plant a flowering tree. There you go. There's a project for you for the year. I hope you enjoy the little bits and pieces that I'm sharing with you this week. They're just touching on things as well that I would really, really love you to go out and explore as well. Uh, I found it really uh, fantastic yesterday. I was down um, 
having a bike ride very early in the morning and my local council was giving out trees and I thought it was really fantastic because it was this is what we we're talking about this week. So there's another place as well. I, I'm not too sure how it works in other countries but I know in Australia you can definitely go um, to your local council and, and get a tree. So it's an easy thing to do. And even if you don't have a garden to plant a tree, plant a tree somewhere else. Make sure that you're planting it somewhere where it's okay. And uh, the other thing you can do, of course, is join one of the bush regeneration projects. There's lots around. Look, once a month, once every few months, if you can just spare a couple of hours, that is a fantastic thing to do. They are always looking for people because they plant hundreds of trees all around Australia every single week. Have a fantastic week. I'd love to see your flowering trees. I'd love to hear um, your questions and also your stories as well. Blessings.